Clark has regained his eligibility and has become a terror since his return. Throw in the rest of Bano's arsenal, and UNLV is ready to cause terror in the whack. But UTEP is solid, like a rock. It's the Don Haskins way, and the Bear doesn't allow terror inside his den. It's UNLV and UTEP coming up next. <laughs> Don Haskins Center in El Paso, rightly named for the great coach here at UTEP and the site of tonight's whack matchup between UNLV and UTEP. Hi, everybody. I'm Craig Bullard. Jack, the running Rebels coming in with an 8-6 and six record, maybe the best 8-6 and six team in college basketball. Preseason All-America pick. Keon Clark is back after having some eligibility problems, and now this UNLV team is starting to mesh. John Lambert alongside tonight, and Keon's return means trouble for opponents. This UNLV front line very dangerous. It really does. You know, a player with Keon Clark's abilities is really hungry to get back after suspension. He's really showing it on the floor. He's a terrific talent. He's got a lot of ability down on the post, takes the ball to the basket strong. One of the things I like most about it is in addition to his inside play, he's got a soft touch from the outside. He can make that 15 foot jumper if he has to. And then your real key to his play is his defensive ability. He's one of the best shot blockers UNLV's ever had. The real beneficiary though of his suspension is a freshman named Gaspar Scambala. He's a real banger. He's got a lot of minutes down low. He's put him to good use. Brings the ball to the basket tough. He's another good inside threat for the team. John, you talk about Utah, of course. Uh, Don Haskins, a legendary coach. Not a lot of flat with this team, but a lot of hard work, and that's a Don Haskins way. Don Haskins typically is a fundamental coach. He likes to work on defense, let the offense come to the team off of the defense, but if you had to look to a player on that team to give him some scoring punch, it would be Sharif Fajardo. Leads the team in scoring. Look for him to really put the ball in the hoop. All right, tonight it's the battle of the whack here at the Don Haskins Center. UNLV on the road. Keon Clark averaging 19 points a game since his comeback. We'll have the tip coming up. This simple-looking device is the key. As 6'8", and he'll have the chore of trying to contain the big guy, Keon Clark. For UNLV, you know about Clark, about Kambala. Tyrone Nesby, 6'6", forward, averaging 18 points a game. He can drive, he can jump. A very good player for Billy Baino. Now, of course, with Keon Clark out of the lineup for those 11 games, he had to go to his youth, and the youth has really come through for Billy Baino. They are 8-6 and six and hoping to get better down the stretch. Pass is, is going to be that much better a player be, because of this. The tough thing for Greedy was he played out of position. So, you know, Greedy's now again really almost starting over. This is his fourth game or fifth game that, you know, he's played the point guard, which is his natural position. But he and Mark have done a good job of both taking their turns, running the team, and accepting the minutes that they get. Uh, so, yeah, you know, the younger guys have gotten better. Uh, and now as a group, we just need to be patient uh, and, and continue to get better as a whole. Well, Craig, what's really fascinating about this UNLV team is the fact that they are 0-6, but they're 0-6 against some of the best teams in the country right now. And uh, they've managed to hold their own. They've had a pretty big loss margin, but they played some good games and lost only in the second half. And now he's got his full complement of players back, and that can only help to strengthen the team. And some of the supporting cast have been thrust into the spotlight and forced to get some experience. There's a good look at Billy Baino, third season at UNLV, 8-6 on the season, 1-1 in conference play. And the Hall of Famer, Don Bear Haskins, 37 seasons here at UTEP, 701 victories, only nine coaches. John have reached that mark. Of course, the great Dean Smith at 879. He's ranked number one, but the Bear at 701. Clark will jump it. UNLV will win the tip, and Greedy Daniels chases it down, brings it up court. One of the things you expect to see from UTEP is just a straight man-to-man -man defense. They like to apply a lot of pressure and really cinch up on their, on their players. And when everybody gets loose, it's tough. They like to shoot the long ball as well. Nesby connects early. A three-point bucket. The senior from Cairo, Illinois. There's Sharif Ferrardo trying to drive the paint. Picked up 
an extra step. You can't do that, turn it over, going the other way. It's a problem you have to watch out for early is trying to make a play happen. Really, Fajardo got the ball and tried to create something offensively after one pass. And what I really know the Bear would like to see them do is move the ball around the front a little more, look for a better shot. UTEP coming off a win over Air Force Thursday night, 69 to 58. You know, V now 371 straight games with at least one three-point shot made. First shot of the game, they take care of that. Well, Daniels can't understand why he didn't get a call there. He penetrated the basket, he viewed the defender, and felt he got fouled on the way to the hoop. He's, he's got a point. Sanders pushes the tempo for Hardo. Smith against Corky Osborne. Back to Fajardo. Keon Clark, that wide wingspan, knocks the ball free. I think what makes Clark such a great shot blocker is he has very quick hands. He's always active, has good foot position. He's always looking to strip the ball and make a block. Clark posted up, turned to that jump shot short. He's got a lot, a lot of shots to put up to make up for 11 games of suspension. <laughs> and is three games back, averaging 19 points, eight rebounds. Driving down the lane, untouched is Sanders. Alton Sanders out of Saginaw, Michigan. Aliou Nesby, smooth. That's just good eye contact between two players, watching for the other one cutting to the basket. Good pass. John, how, uh, how many weapons Nesby has? He can shoot three, he can slash and drive and jump. What, what, what does that leave? I don't know. That's about all. <laughs> Jumper off the mark, Clark pulls down a rebound. Nesby on the wing, nice feet inside. Kambala, big fellow, left hand shot wouldn't go. Good defensive stand by the freshman, Wolfram. And now a 20 second timeout called by Don Haskins. Well, your college basketball hoop dreams come true. Hundreds and hundreds of extra basketball games night after night available on pay-per-view. Order today. Call DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS or your cable company. You want hoop? You can find it right there. Go UNLV. Off to a 5-2 start. Nesby with five points. There's the all-time winningest Division I coaches, the great Dean Smith, bypassing Adolph Rupp. I can guarantee you, though, during that 20-second timeout, while UTEP's got the ball, he might have called the play, but he was really talking to his team about defense. I'll guarantee you that. Ohardo, ball nearly picked now. Here comes Daniels. You know, Daniels is such an explosive player, and now that he's got his position back, at the natural point guard spot, he's feeling much more confident. Again, he's only a freshman. You know, he's got a long way to go with UNLV, and he's getting some real valuable time here his freshman year. He was a parade All-American. Averages 22 points a game as a senior. Wolfram, short. Fajardo, nice little jump hook in the lane. So Fajardo on the board averaging just under 17 in a contest out of New York City. And Fajardo has learned quickly that a lot of points can be scored if you really work the, the offensive boards. You know, the putback shot is an easy way to get some baskets. Well, that's Kambala's strength, you know, getting the ball down low and looking for the contact. And that's a tough, uh, tough call to receive because the official has to make the decision of who's initiating it. In that case, it looked like Kaspars did that. Bano in disagreement. Kambala, a great story from Latvia. He's averaged double doubles, 16 points, 10 rebounds on the season. A kid that really wasn't going to play very many minutes because of Keon Clark. Now, Billy Bano can't take him off the floor. <laughs> he's won the spot, and he's going to keep it. UTEP showing patience. Baseline jumper is away. Three-point bucket. Knocked down by B.J. Wade. Seven all here in El Paso. Clark wants the ball. Oh, nice dribble move. Nesby hit from behind and a whistle. 
Wolfram, the freshman, picks up his first. Well, I'll tell you, the good pass here by Keon sets up this play, but if you watch what UTEP has done in the last couple minutes is they've really settled their defense down. They're playing much more solid defense, and with the exception of that foul coming to the basket, they're really trying to seal off the inside, and that's exactly what Don Haskins wants them to do. Mesby makes the first. 65% shooter from the line. Six points to start this game. Make it seven. So John Nesby has scored seven of UNLV's first nine points here in the first four minutes. And Nesby has done it by being a very active open court player. He's got most of his points off of drive to the basket or again that alley-oop play went on the back door. Bernardo got Clark up in the air, drives, dishes underneath. Left the freshman beauty. Well, one of the things a good offensive player has to know how to do is to pass the ball off when all the defense comes to him. They're certainly going to be keying on uh, Sharif, and that was an excellent pass. Back the other way, Daniels hits the deck, no whistle. Short on the shot. Here comes Sanders. Wolfram dumps it. Fajardo. I'll tell you, that's Don Haskins' style. Unselfish play. And for Harder with a couple of buckets, and the Utah Miners on their home floor lead by two. Backside rebound by Sanders. A little guy likes to push the tempo on a Saginaw. Wolfram a little bit off his fingertips, and it's a turnover. Wolfram again on the... Uh, freshman this year he's learning a lot in his first season at UTEP fourth turnover for the young miners Clark knocks it off the window with the left hand Keon Clark first bucket you know it's interesting it's it's difficult to play a left-hander early on especially if you haven't done that a lot because he's typically turning the other direction for most right-handed players and it takes sometimes a defensive player a few minutes to catch on well, in his first three games back, he shot 61% from the floor. I don't know if there was much rust after sitting out the 11 games. As we talked about in the open, I think being away from the game and the competition for that amount of time, you get pretty hungry to get back and make an impact right away. Up top, Sanders, five on the shot clock, three on the shot. Not much chance. That starts to break. Nesby runs it down. Blocking foul. On Wade. Well, if you're the defender on this play, you just have to feel that Nesby's going to come to the basket. And he did, and he got the foul. Timeout. Tough defense by UNLV. Good one going on here in El Paso. Tied up at 11. John Lambert back in El Paso, 11 apiece with 13.53 to go. Good, good battle with the freshman. Good fundamental basketball here by Kaspar Scambala trying to guard Brandon Wolfram, but Sharif Fajardo does the right thing. He dishes off the minute the pressure comes to him. Good basket by Brandon. Wolfram coming off a career high in his first collegiate start. It's interesting, too, when you talk about that. He was 6 for 7 from the field and 5 for 5 from the free throw line the other night, and the first thing Haskins talks about as well, his defense wasn't all that great. we got to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought he'd be gushing over about how great his freshman played, and he says, well, we'll start tonight. We'll see how he does. Kid played a great game. Daniels feeds Nesby. Quick turnaround off the iron, and Wolfram. That place right top of the rebound. Just under 14 minutes left to play opening half. Good crowd. On this Sunday Eve, Saturday Eve, I'm jumping ahead of it. Oh, lost right out of the hands was Wade. Had a good look. Nesby on the break. The trailer. Oh, how did he come up with that ball? I'll tell you, that's when Nesby's the strongest in the open court. And he just flipped it over there to Keon Clark. And Clark, you know, took a couple of hops, but the official thinking, you got two steps going to the basket, we'll let it go. You now the word on, on Clark, Billy Bano's the guy likes a gush with compliments as a jumper falls off the rim. Clark's a big man that has guard skills. Yeah, definitely. He's he's quick, he's mobile, but the difficulty he's going to have is playing against players of equal size that outweigh him by 20 or 30 pounds, and that's where he's going to really have to use his quickness. Really a seven-footer, but only 220. Tempo is picking up. Loose ball and a whistle. You know, one of the things I've been noticing about Keon so far is that he's looking pretty tired. I mean, he's got to work himself back into condition as he gets back into the season here. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a blow, gets a few minutes off the bench. 
Nesby's really the guy you want to look for because he can make things happen if you can outlet the ball. Foul on the inbounds opportunity. Nesby picks up his first 13 foul. Isaiah Epps, a 6'10 senior, checks in. Jump shots away, a little bit short. Bamba comes in, relief, number 33 for Don Haskins. And that rebound by Kevin Simmons is his first, first play back after a 14-game suspension. Simmons, baseline shot. Wolfram the rebound. Now Simmons missed the 14 games. Three point, no. Simmons again working hard for the rebound. He and Clark took a improper trip to Orlando, which was financed by a sports agent. So Clark got the 11 games and Simmons 14. And there's a look at Simmons out of Brooklyn, New York, a redshirt last year. And it's interesting talking to Bill Boehner before the game, you know, now that he's got his full complement of players back, Clark and Simmons together, he thinks it's going to take. Oh, a month or so, or, or at least a few weeks for them really to fit back in and, and get the chemistry going right. So now that they're back, they're going to have to really fit themselves into the program. What? Simmons picks up the foul. That's going to be his first of the year. <laughs> Can't say that too many players. We won't be able to say that for long. Mid-January, yeah. You know, it also brings, John, another, another problem for Baino. He's had some good players on the floor. Now he's got... The problem of distributing minutes, sure, sure, but I think ultimately uh, it gives you depth, and as a result, the players that have gotten the minutes that are playing well really will sort of have to lose their positions, if you will, and the other fellows are going to have to earn them. And I think uh, Keon certainly has done that early on. Now it's going to be uh, Kevin Simmons' chance. Quentin Thomas, number 40 in the ball game, along with Rico Nelson in the backcourt for Don Haskins. Bamba baseline, looking to shoot it up against Simmons. Clock. Nelson. Epps trying to keep it alive. Loose ball and a foul. Lewis Radford, a freshman, went up and was fouled. Well, you know, the thing that's unfortunate about this kind of offense, shooting a three-point shot, is that the bigger players, Bamba in particular, gets pulled away from the basket on, on offense, and he's outside, not in a good position to get into the rebound, but they're trying to crash the boards hard, and actually UTEP, which isn't a great rebounding team, is working very hard right now against UNLV. Radford really struggles from the line, John. Only 22%. Free, free throw shooting really has a lot to do with a routine and uh, something you can be comfortable with when you go to the line. It's something that really has more mental impact than ability. Good rotation that time for Radford. The freshman's on the board. We'll take a break after this. Your heart's pounding, adrenaline's pumping. Half UNLV fighting UTEP here in El Paso, up by one, 13-12. NHL All-Star Saturday tonight on ESPN for Vancouver, British Columbia. The league's best players, including the great one, Wayne Gretzky, will compete in Hockey Skills Challenge, which includes the fastest skater, the hardest shot, and breakaway relay. The legends of hockey lace it up one more time. A new battle live for Vancouver tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. You know, Craig, one of the keys to the game has been for UTEP to try to keep UNLV off the blocks and particularly keep Keon Clark away from the basket. And so far, they've been doing a pretty good job of physically planning, bumping him around, and not letting him get his position down low. Bomba really working right now to keep him from getting his favorite position, which is down low. Well, I've got a couple of minutes on the bench. Well, here Bomba's really doing a good job trying to keep his body in between the ball and Keon Clark, keeping the ball away from him. And if anything, Bomba there forced Greedy to take the shot, put it toward the basket. Jose Escobedo picked up the foul, number 25. You know, Greedy Daniels is really an intensive player. He's real aggressive. Uh, 
really likes to, to play, really a hard player, good defender, all-around player, has an excellent attitude, and I, I just think he's a great find for the UNLV program. Another parade All-American. Seems like to be a lot of those on this UNLV team. Made the first, missed the second. Rico Nelson on the wing. Quentin Thomas, 11 on the shot. They feed inside, Bamba. Looking baseline, back up top. Nelson with four on the shot. Bamba. Thomas. But a fresh 35 off the rebounded miss. I think UTEP really has to work hard to get Bamba to look toward the basket because he gets the ball down low, and unless it's wide open, he's not going to take that shot. It allows five men to play four. Here comes Clark. How many 6'11 guys you see bring it down the court? In and out. I don't know, you watch an NBA game and most of the guards are 6'9", 6'11". And it's no big secret that Keon would like to play in the NBA. He said it many times. And of course, his second choice would be broadcasting, so yeah. that's when I get work. Yeah, he wants your that's job. That's I get work. Again, working hard for shots, Utah. And that's just a result of great ball move on the half, behalf of the Miners. They passed the ball around, got in the hands of the right player, and, and scored on that sequence. Three-point field goals. Utah two of five, and they're not a three-point club, John. 27% on the season. They've had a couple big ones here early. It's 15-14. Utah. Simmons way off the mark. A little bit of the rush showing there. Mark Dickel. Is in the backcourt for Billy Bano. Where's number? That's Keith. Pardon me, number three, Keith. Bomba and Simmons really going after it down low. And Keith picks up the foul, the hand check. You know, Simmons really trying to get involved in the flow of the game, and the best way for him to do it is try to be physical on defense. But here's two big guys trying to fight for position down low, and really uh, no opportunity to get the ball into Bumble with Simmons playing defense like that. Now Dickel checks in, along with Nesby. Both coaches using their bench quite a bit here in this first, first half. We played 11 minutes. Tough to get the inside position on UNLV. Well, the inside defense with both Simmons and Clark in there right now is excellent. They just cannot get the ball inside. Bamba picks up the foul. <laughs> You've just seen a lot of good defensive position playing on the part of Simmons there. A lot of banging going on. Nice back pick there by Bamba to get his teammate open. The Bear not happy at all. I do a little growling. You tap by one. Dickel on the drive. Underneath the run. What a dish and a jam. <laughs> well, that's why you shoot 61% when you're getting feeds like that. You're that close to the basket, it's hard to miss. Six points, three buckets for Keon Clark. UNLV back on top, 16-15. Shot wouldn't go. Rebound underneath. Radford having trouble against Clark. But Escobedo keeps it alive. Shot no. Nesby fights with Clark for the rebound. Here comes Dickel. Nesby on the dribble drive. Haynes shoots no. Rebound goes out to Bamba. UNLV trying to score on transition offense, so they're trying to take the early shot. The same thing for El Paso. Well, a foul on Keith, his second. Quentin Thomas, so far this year, has not shot a free throw in a game. So this is his first trip to the free throw line. So if he makes it, he'll be 100% for the season. And he is. 
Averages a point a game, so he's at his average. He's a junior out of Humboldt, Texas. Played a couple years at LSU, then went down to San Juancito uh, Junior College. Just joined the minors about a month ago. Made them both. Timeout was 7.33 to play in the opening half. UTEP leads UNLV by one. We'll be back. You know the game. Now get inside it. Log on to NBA.com and reach every team and every player. Explore NBA. Here's Dickel from New Zealand, the top assist man. Last year was the WAC Pacific Division Freshman of the Year. His whole reason for being in the ball game, according to Bill Baino, though, we're talking about Dickel now, is to pass the ball. So you, if you're playing him, you got to expect him really not to penetrate unless you leave him all alone. He's coming to the basket with the idea to dish it off. And you have to go into the game thinking about that. Clark on the drive. This good shot wouldn't go for Hardo back in. Gets a rebound. I'm talking about Dickel. He averages about seven points a game. That's just that's mustard on the hot dog. Hey, you know, that's just like being out there and hustling. You know, he's not really working for those shots. He's making them happen. Bajardo up around the three-point line, drives on Clark, gives off the freshman, Wolfram. Bam. You know, the thing I like about Wolfram is he's got good range inside and outside. He's not afraid to put the ball up. When he gets it in position, he plants his feet right, takes a shot. And as he gets more experience on the floor, he's just going to get better. Well, John, he shoots 64% from the floor. Hasn't shot the ball enough to qualify for national rankings, but my goodness. Yeah, he's off to a real hot start this season, and he's gaining confidence as he goes. And uh, as everybody knows, shooting the basketball is all confidence and, and a lot of ability, but at the same time, when you start thinking they go in, as opposed to when you've missed 10 or 20 in a row, the confidence just, uh, just snowballs for you. Keon Clark back on the bench for UNLV. It's been moved, little dish wouldn't go by William Smith. Nesby the other way. To Simmons. Nisby, Nisby. Dribble drive way off the mark. Another rebound for Utah on the defensive end. And another, another rebound for Wolfram, too. He played excellent defense in the post. Fajardo took that one big step. Fajardo's a very smart inside player. He knows where his defensive uh, man is at all times. When he gets the ball, he knows how to do that drop step move and come right to the hoop. And the Miners lead is now five. Kambala backing in on the freshman left hand. Tough, tough shot to defend. Kaspar's Kambala. Yeah, we called him a banger at the start of the shot. That's the way he scores his points. He got back on defense, but not soon enough. It's going to be two on Kambala. Well, Kambala coming back after the great offensive play at the other end gets back and tries to get his feet planted. The trick there is you've got to be there within a certain step. He's got to give the guy two steps to get to the basket. Didn't allow him enough room, and Sharif just took it up to him. Bajardo, a good free throw shooter, 73%. Actually leads the team. So Kambala with the two fouls will have to sit and Clark. Really got a minute on the bench. He's back in. Fajardo's signature lately has been his ability to produce double doubles in the game and double points, double rebounds. Twenty-two, eighteen. The lead is four for Utah. Simmons holds the ball, backs in, turns, and fires it up. Count it. First bucket of the season, and you saw right there Simmons with good hang time. Tough shot over the freshman. Well, Simmons initiating the contact, and Wolfram holding his own there to his credit, tried to keep his hands up, but once you bump the other player and he's in the act of shooting, you're almost certainly going to get the foul call. Second foul on Wolfram. First free throw for Simmons. Completes a three-point play. Twenty-two, twenty-one. Utah. 
you, know, you get the feeling as this game started that UTEP might have been a little bit intimidated by UNLV, but you certainly don't sense that any longer. They're passing the ball around, they're moving it inside. You got a great cut to the basket on that play. Fajardo's happy with the play. They, they really feel that they're on the same level with this UNLV team. Clark got him as he broke down the lane. Well, it's no big secret that Keon Clark is not a great defensive player with his feet. What he tries to do, as we said at the open, is block shots. And here, he tried to just mirror the moves by Fajardo. Tried to get up in time to block it. Fajardo is just too quick. Three-point play. Fajardo now in double figures with 10. First foul on Clark. 25-21 Utah. Clark. Oh, <laughs> circus well, shot. Yeah. He went up right-handed and finished it off left-handed. Quite a move. Dickel slow coming up off the floor. Utah by a bucket. I like Dickel. He's a great player. He's a good hustler. He does those things that don't really show up on the stat sheet always, but he has a great impact on the outcome of a ball game. Plays sound defense, moves the ball around. Dependable, not many mistakes. Play him off. Sanders has it for Utah. Under five minutes left, drives Clark, knocked it away, but the rebound off the off the block and put that on the board. Good bucket, Bamba. His first hoop of the night. Back to Clark. Osborne, the cutter. Clark, the left-hander, short. Underneath for the board is Sanders. You know, the matchup between Fajardo and, and Clark is a good one because Fajardo certainly has the quickness to stay up. Boy, collision in the lane. And Poncho looks like he got one. He got Poncho. <laughs> I tell you, that's no fun, especially when you come to the basket hard. Kind of knocked the wind out of him a little, but uh, that trip to the line should should rejuvenate him a little bit. Well, Simmons weighs in at 230. Poncho is only 185, and especially with the momentum he was carrying to the basket. That coaches always tell you, if you're going to foul a guy, though, make it count, you know, and, and don't let him get to the basket, don't let him score. Make him score from the free throw line. Epps will check back in along with Daniels. Dickel comes out along with Simmons for UNLV. You look at Simmons, looks like he could play an outside linebacker for you. 6'8", 230. And Sanders makes the second. Three points for Sanders. 3.56 to go. UTEP by five in the first half. Gentlemen, I'm going to read you your rights. You had the right to be strong, to be healthy, to shine. John, you'll like this. Snowboarding, snow mountain bike racing, ice climbing, ski boarding, and skier X. Day two action, by the way, continues in prime time on the deuce following this one here from El Paso. All my favorite sports. Winter X Games. Guys, 6'11 are great at those kinds of things, you know. <laughs> so you I see Sanders still holding that, uh, that midsection. He did take a bump there from Simmons. Number one, number one. They're talking about it now. Said, lucky I didn't have a lunch before this game. <laughs> Tyrone Nesby. Well, when you tell the other guy that when you tell the other guy it doesn't hurt, you're not supposed to be holding the party hit. You know, you're supposed to say it didn't hurt, but you can't touch it at the same time. Those things don't work together. Lucky Osborne jumps out. Nesby likes that corner shot. Fajardo. The rebound. As coach used to say, he likes that corner shot, but it doesn't like him. You got to give it to uh, to Don Haskins. Uh, he, he always seems to play up the ability of the other team and tell his players that they're playing against a tougher team. And really, these guys are very good ball players. And he gets them to play at a higher level that way. He gets them to work on their defense and, and, and get things out of the offense that they might not ordinarily get. Good look by Fajardo in and out. Daniels takes the pick from the big fella Clark, puts him in the lane, and draws the foul. 
Sanders picks up the foul. Well, Greedy Daniels clearly trying to get a play started here by running a pick off of Keon Clark, trying to get him to go to the basket, and Keon elects to stay at the free throw line, so unfortunately, Greedy has to continue to penetrate. New shot clock, so Greedy willing to work it a little bit longer rather than take that early three. Donovan Stewart, number 14, in the ball game. Nesby comes out. Donovan Stewart, a freshman. Turnover. Sharif took that little hop when he received the ball before he put the ball on the floor, and the official was right there to call it. Not happy. You see, before he gets the ball now, right when it touches his hands, now he's in the air. Ah, now that we've had a look, I think that's not traveling. I think that was a fair call. Ball has to just leave your hand before you take the step. See how I keep going by Reach up by five, Simmons flies. He was met down the baseline. I tell you, UTEP defense playing very, very hard nose. Bamba. Well, they're helping each other here. Bamba comes back to assist Fajardo, makes a great play, no foul. Bamba with his 10th block. One of the toughest things for freshmen to learn is when to go to the basket and when to make the pass and how much is enough. You know, you're you're trying to feel what the coach wants you to do and you don't know when you're being too aggressive. And on that occasion, Greedy made the right decision. Bamba picks up his second. Daniels, a 57% shooter, misses the front end. Take a look at Jose Escobedo as he comes in the ball game. He's actually doubled his playing time since his freshman year, so he's getting a lot more minutes now. 20-second timeout. Well, make sure you stick around. Halftime, ESPN News Network, ACC Scare, top 25 highlights. It's all coming up at halftime. 2.27 to go in this one. 28-23, as you look at Billy Bainham, who spent seven years an assistant at UMass, that's some good coaching there, John Calipari. Learned a lot of Calipari now, obviously, with the Nets. And it was interesting to see Bano and Haskins meet each other briefly before the game when we were around and, and feel the respect that uh, he gave the Bear in terms of his longevity in the game and his contributions and so forth. But I noticed in particular he said good luck, and, and at the same time, I think once they step on the floor and they're coaching against each other, uh, you know, all bets are off. <laughs> Well, Haskins has coached here for 37 years. The best line of the whole talk was when Bano said, I hope I'm alive in 37. <laughs> <laughs> Much less coaching. Yeah. Well, they're going to call jump ball, so the possession arrow pointing to UTEP. <laughs> I hope I'm alive in 37 <laughs> Oh. I don't know whether that's a compliment or kind of a jab. Haskins has battled some health problems, had a heart attack, beating, uh, battling diabetes, but yet says he feels great. The health will not play a factor 37 years here. He expects to hang around until he says, I have a good team. <laughs> I think he's got a lot to offer, too. Fajardo blocked away. Grabs the miss. The shot would go. Look at this working on the offensive board. You know, th th that's Fajardo's bread and butter is his ability to remain mobile, to take a shot, follow it up, go to the basket, be active. He's the kind of player who uses his feet and uses his hands to be effective. He never stops paying attention to where he is on the floor and where the ball is. We've been stuck on a 28-23 score for a few minutes. Sanders. Look at inside, kicks it back. B.J. Wade. Across the court, nice fake, jump shot down low to, oh, baseline. Little give and go fake, and Fajardo with a dozen. Yeah, got the defender to look away and just did a great baseline spin move. The lead is seven, under a minute 30 left and a half. Well, he's the second leading field goal percentage shooter in the conference at 53 percent. You can see why, you know, he works to penetrate to the basket, and if he can't put it in, odds are he's going to get fouled. Let's go Beto picks up foul number two. Boy, he, he did a great spin move to the baseline. Also showed the ball first to get his man out of position. Just good offensive awareness on the part of Sharifa Harder. 
Now Haskins probably, the minute he makes a basket, he's talking about the defense. You can count on that. Haskins was put into the uh, Hall of Fame September 29th of 97. He told us, he goes, you know, I don't know what I really did to deserve it. <laughs> he, al Coach. he also said he'd like to go back again when he can remember what, what it was like. He said he was so nervous and it was so exciting that uh, it all happened so quickly. He'd like to go back again and enjoy it a little more. Epps makes them both. Senior from King Street, South Carolina. Breaks a long drought for UNLV. Daniel's got a hand on They break the press. Out of bounds off UNLV. El Paso having a little trouble getting the ball up the court right now. UNLV applying pressure in the backcourt and it's eating up some of their time on the shot clock. <laughs> now this is what we call a statement play here. Fajardo is really showing that he's got the inside moves. He loves it, you know, he, he's he's getting his position, he's asking for the ball, he brings it in strong, and he dunks it when he hits the ground. I'm telling you, this man is pumped up, he's ready to play. Isaiah Epps picks up his first foul, Keon Clark checks back in. Look at the numbers on, on this game tonight, six to 10 from the floor, 14.7 boards. Now all along, you gotta know the ball's coming to him. And, and he's in excellent condition, I'll tell you. you know, he's not even looking to win it out here, and if I'm not mistaken, he's been in almost the entire first half. Osborne swings around to Simmons. Biggest lead for Utah at 33-25. 45 seconds, game clock, 19 on the shot. Simmons inside. What a good look. Last touch. You know, by best, Stewart. Best part of that defensive sequence on the part of UTEP was the fact that Fajardo forced Keon Clark to pass the ball. He did not let him come to the basket. Pushed him outside out of his range and made him give the ball up. About a two-second differential between game and shot clock. Sanders playing for the one shot. UTEP really should be able to exploit Sharif right now. Instead, Daniels comes up with a foul. That's going to be two on Greedy Daniels. Poncho Sanders. Having a chance to put two more on the board here. Sanders at 71 percent, three and three in this first half. Maybe the second. Well, UTEP should really apply some pressure so they don't get a quick shot. They've only got five seconds left in the half, and instead they don't stop the penetration. And Greedy Daniels gets to the hoop. Uh, easy bucket, not the way you want to end the half. They throw it down court. It's a buzzer. Sounds good. First half here at El Paso. UTEP and UNLV. Fajardo with 15 points to lead the Miners. Keon Clark, the big guy, eight points for the running Rebels. Halftime coming up, 34-27. Who says you can't buy taste? My clients do it all the time. Like let
Tucker, though. This is his busy season, so there must be some other factors why he got that nickname. Well, and many accolades for Don Haskins, the Hall of Fame, 700 plus wins, and now the stuffed bear. We'll come back. Halftime rolls on 34 27, Miners. Problem for you and LV right now has been able or be, their ability to get Keon Clark open underneath. Man for man, anybody that's guarded Keon right now has really put their body on him and manhandled him and it's made him very frustrated. He's trying to get open, but they're really laying the wood on him, putting a body on him, and not letting him get to the ball. And that's been a real problem. On the other side, Sharif Fajardo for UTEP has just been excellent at getting the ball, being mobile, getting his position inside. Here he caps it with a dunk, and you can see the emotion in his face and in his body as he makes that slam. You look at the first half numbers. Miners shooting 41%. UNLV only 33. They've been at the free throw line 12 compared to nine. Three point shots a surprise. Two of eight, but the rebounding. The Miners 28 boards compared to a bigger UNLV team with only 11. And it's really a sign of their defense. The shooting percentage and the rebounding has a lot to do with the defensive part on UTEP. Fajardo leading all scores with 15. Wolfram the freshman and Sanders with four. Keon Clark had a good start. Finishes up with eight in the first half. Nesby quiet, at least the way he plays, with seven. And Daniels, Greedy Daniels with five. Fajardo now double figures, John, 14 of the last 15 games. You know, and I like his style of play because he's so active. He, he doesn't wait for the ball to come to him. He moves around to open spots, makes sure he makes the play, and makes it easy for his teammates to deliver the ball to him. They waste no time getting the ball into the hands of Keon Clark. Double figures, five buckets, ten points, and quickly they turn it to five. You know, as we just said, that's been their shortfall in the first half is doing the same thing with Keon Clark, getting him mobile, getting him moving, and they've probably had a long talk. Bainer's probably told him, you've got to get yourself open to five. Bad lob into Fajardo and Kambala, who had his time limited in the first half because of foul trouble, pulls down the loose ball. Keon Clark, even at seven feet, nearly seven, a little bit high on the inbound, on the inbound pass. Same kind of poor communication, poor visual communication on both teams and both of those sequences, just poor passes into the post. Turnovers, they average only 15 a game, to not only three. That's typically as a result of their fast break style of offense. Great move again by Sharif. You know, he's so patient and looking for his opportunity. He sets his shots up well. I'm really impressed by his play this evening. 17 points. Again, shots like that explain why you shoot the 53, 54 percent from the floor. The ball knocked away by Wolfram. Down he goes. Oh. Jammed a foul. Osborne got him on the way up. You know, Wolfram is showing some real poise as a young player. And what he does that's important here is he takes the ball to the basket rather than goes in for the layup. He takes the ball right to the rim and forces the defender to chase him to the hoop, comes in strong, feels the contact on his arm, puts it through the hole. Second foul on Osborne. Three point shot for Wolfram. You know what the Bears said before the game, what Don Haskins said is he'd like to stick around until he's got a really good team, and he's got the makings of it right now. Some of these players are very young, Wolfram especially a freshman. He's got good things to look forward to. Foul call on Kevin Simmons. That's going to be three on Simmons. And a 20-second timeout called by Billy Bano. Well, one of the challenges in coming back after being out for any reason, whether it's a suspension or an, in an injury, is to get your tempo back together, to come back and get your rhythm and understand how to play uh, with, your, with your teammates. Simmons is having that problem. Well, John, the last few months have been very special for Coach Don Haskins. The Hall of Fame, his induction ceremony, September 29th, 1997. Uh, the, I'll tell you, the, that is really an awesome event. And uh, next couple of years, I'd like to go back and where I'm in, relaxed and can enjoy it. But uh, uh, that, that was something else, you know, the entire place. Uh, I guess 1,500 people in there and everybody in tuxedos. I've had one on in my life. And 
the way the Hall of Fame people uh, conduct that thing, it, it really is something else. And it's unbelievable how many uh, people who have been inducted go by. And he's up here, this is a one time, he's won the tux. He doesn't think he'll wear one again. But what a great night for Don Haskins and a turnover. You know, just not taking care of the ball. It's interesting that, that uh, graphic we showed a few moments ago about their turnovers this evening. They just had poor shot selection. They haven't turned the ball over as much as they do on average, but uh, they have not made good decisions in terms of their shot selection. You go back to this, that graphic. This was the special event center back in September. Wolfram rejected. Now it's the Don Haskins Center. Loose ball. Picked up. And it's going to be Utah basketball. William Smith will try to put some sanity back in, in this building. Wild. No reset! No reset! No reset! Now, if you hear someone talking, it's Billy Vano right in front of us. Vocal. I tell you, it's it's the uh, youth versus the sage old bear this evening, and Bano certainly is emotionally involved in this ballgame. His club trails by nine. Fajardo picks up the foul. It's going to be number two. So far, Haskins uh, minors have been able to really take the UNLV game uh, team out of their game plan. They really hadn't planned to play this style of ball game. They wanted to have fast break baskets be available to them. They want to get the ball down low into Keon Clark, and they haven't been able to do really either of those things. Here's a setup play after a, a foul situation, and they can't produce a good shot. So it's very frustrating for a coach to have this happen to his team. Back the other way, loose ball. Fajardo working hard. By the way, only two fouls on the big fella. Jump shot, B.J. Wade kicks and fires. Fajardo jumping out of the building. Did he step out? Yes. Interesting, the fans don't like that call because Fajardo had the ball in the air and they felt similar to football that he'd been forced out of bounds and should still have possession of the ball. There's the official. That's the universal sign of a poor officiating, in case you're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate dissatisfaction. UNLV held only one bucket in this half. Keon Clark floats it up. No. That's a tough, that's a very difficult shot. Fading away from the basket. Good defense by El Paso. Daniels going for the steal out of bounds. Utah basketball. Only one bucket in three and a half minutes for both clubs. I, I tell you, even at that though. In this particular ball game, you just don't feel that you put UNLV away. You know they're, they're the kind of team that can bring the ball up the ball, up the court quickly. They can score baskets in bunches. Uh, they're by no means uh, out of this ball game. Sanders with 17 on the shot clock. Takes left, go right on Daniels. And now a whistle. You know, Pancho Sanders is wise in that instance to try to penetrate a little bit and force Greedy to play some defense. He, he managed to draw a foul there, but he uses up some time on the clock. He keeps the uh, Texas El Paso Miners into their game plan and uh, comes up with a good play. Clark checks out at the 16-14 mark and back in is Isaiah Epps. So Epps will have the chore of trying to hold down Fajardo with 17, 18 points. Still a full shot clock after the foul, so Texas El Paso with the luxury of taking their time as they run their offense, certainly making the defense work harder. Oh, Fajardo made a little move with the shoulder, and that made Sanders break to the bucket. Fajardo threw it away. Timeout. UTEP leads 38-29. We'll be back. Una bellissima opera. Viaggianti, eh? Sto guardando quella soprano. La soprano. La soprano. Sopra. 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 Sopra.
NHL tonight, All-Star Edition comes from Vancouver. Bill Pito and Barry Melrose will bring you the latest on the NHL All-Star Weekend from the skills competition straight through the big game as North American players take on the world in a new All-Star format tonight and Sunday on the Deuce NHL tonight. Well, you can see it right here in the numbers, you know, Fajardo is really bringing the ball to the basket. They're about even up in terms of attempts, but the uh, the difference is Fajardo's ability to, to take the ball, penetrate, get to the basket is really helping his team. Also, three three-point plays tonight. Yep. Buckets and fouls, and he's connected to the three-point play. On the drive is Daniels in traffic off the glass. Shot wouldn't go. Wolfram on the deck. And they're going to jump it. John, you'd like to see the jump ball actually come back into the college game? I would. I would because uh, it, it presents those unusual opportunities where a guy that's 6'11", like myself, can jump against a guy that's 6'1", and I always love being able to do that. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> Seeing some full-court pressure now by UNLV. Sanders breaks the press up mid-court. William Smith been shut out this game offensively. Smith on the break. Goes left, goes right, punches it through. So Smith must have hurt us. Uh, he's on the board, breaks a long run, averages 12 points a game. Well, that was an important play because Fajardo was having a very, very difficult time getting open there with great pressure by UNLV there. Working very hard, the Rebels are trying to close down Fajardo here in the second half. 0 for 3 in the first half was William Smith. Nesby caught in traffic. Loose ball picked up. Good hustle by Sanders. Showtime. Well, all of a sudden, William Smith, the spark plug. A couple of quick buckets to jam, and it's a 42-29 game. You know, the real, the real key here is the steal, the great defense on the other end, the outlet pass, and he gets to just cap it off with a nice dunk. But UTEP is really, you can feel the momentum has been in their favor for the better part of this ball game. And for UNLV to come back, they're really going to have to start playing some strong defense and get that shift in the tide hitting their way. Well, points and shots. The shots have been there, but the buckets haven't fallen. Only, only a bucket by Keon Clark so far in this, this second half of play. That's five-plus minutes. You know, on the last possession, you know, Fiardo was working very hard to get under the basket, but there's some really great defense there on the part of uh, Isaiah Epps, really putting the, putting the body against him, staying in front of him. But here, you know, here we have a good play on the part of Smith to bring the ball to the basket, penetrate, put it through the hoop. So if you can't get him from the big guys if they're collapsing on him, that means somebody ought to be open. Gets up on an 8-2 run. The last 5-15, 42-29 on their home floor. Really stolen away again by Smith. Last touch by the running Rebels. He was so quiet in the first half, I think he uh, must have had his alarm set for about an hour later than when the tip-off was, because he's certainly come to life here in the second half. Eighth turnover for UNLV. took care of the ball, John, in that first 20 minutes. Six turnovers already here in the first five plus. Jump shot up the mark. Clark takes it. Nesby. He is a creator. Dishes off to Dipple. Now Keith looking for three. Dumps inside to Keon Clark. Puts the ball on the floor. Epps wants it on the post. Wolfram doing a good job protecting the inside. Switching over and giving help. Three-point shot, Keith off the mark, Keith. Dickel. Nesby leans and hits. Oh, that's, a, that's a good shot under tough pressure. Keep playing! He was a whack all conference a year ago. Tyrone Nesby now with nine points. He can get you back in a hurry in a ball game. Yeah, that's true. B.J. Wade was doing everything he could to stop him there, and he still put the ball through. 42-31, Utah. Wolfram, baseline jumper, soft touch, no, Clark, look at him climb. That's what I'm talking about, though. Wolfram is not afraid to put the ball up, and that's important to see in a freshman where he's got enough confidence in his shot that when he's open, it's the right way to take it up there. Nesby 
able to draw the foul off Fajardo. You know, Nesby changing up this time. He's been trying to penetrate, trying to draw the foul. This time he just takes it strong into Fajardo. He can't make the basket, but certainly gets himself to the free throw line. Nesby will shoot a pair. Sixty-five percent shooter from the line. Simmons will check in for Epps. You know, a sign of Nesby's aggressive play. He's the only player for UNLV to have fouled out of a game this year. No one else for the Rebels has managed to do that, and that's really due to the fact that he plays all out all the time. He's always playing 110 percent, whether it's offense or defense, and that sometimes that activity can create a lot of foul situations. Well, Lewis Radford and John Bamba check back in for Don Haskins. Bamba coming off the bench in this one, using the starting center for Haskins, but yet the play that Wolfram gave him a couple of nights ago against Air Force, and coach told us today, yeah, I think I'll give him another try. I'm sure, as I mentioned earlier, before he got on the floor, he said, Stun, you had a great uh, game uh, Thursday night offensively, but let's see what you can do on defense, and believe me, He's applying himself on defense. Wolfram working against Kambala. Last touch by UTEP. Well, the Miners have had a couple of opportunities on the last two possessions to score to keep that string alive, and they haven't been able to convert. Now, we'll have to see if UNLV can, can capitalize on this little momentary low in their scoring punch, and Baino trying to do all he can to get his team back to life. Rico Nelson, number 11 back in for William Smith. Whistle away from the ball in the lane. And Wolfram picks up the foul. Well, Kaz Kambala down here just working hard along with Wolfram trying to get open. You can see both of them fighting for position, and it's really a question of which one gets caught last with his hand in the cookie jar, and that time it was Wolfram. His third foul. Dickel on the drive. Scoops it up. And Tough shot by Nickel, his first bucket, the sophomore from New Zealand. You know, as I mentioned earlier, Dickel's role in there is to distribute the ball, but when your key players aren't being able to get in open positions, he's going to have to start looking to the basket. Quentin Thomas pushes it up for Utah. Going up on the 12-minute mark of the second half, and UNLV has shipped away. Nine-point lead now. On the drive, through traffic, Clark to get it out of here. Now, fans not happy. They thought it was on the downward flight. They think he goaltended. Oh, that may be just the kind of momentum change that UNLV needs because Clark was involved at both ends of the floor. Bamba picks up the foul. That will be three on the 6'11 junior and a timeout. 42-33, UTEP. My ancestor dreamt of winning the Highlands Open. But his golf wasn't up to par. So he designed a wider golf club for better control of his drive. Truly, wider is better. Improve your drive with the Wide Track Grand Prix Sports Sedan. It's Well, they didn't get the goaltending call. Clark was involved in the play on the defensive end and also came back on the offensive end, getting the foul, which gives him the ball in possession. Run Rebels trail by nine. Keith draws a crowd. Good call on part of the official. How about the defense by Radford at 6'8? Went up and caused the jump of the possession. 
is for UNLV. That's three jump balls called tonight. I believe it was Clark. Yep, Clark trying to be aggressive down low gets called for a foul, trying to get set up for his position. He has been frustrated as we talked about at halftime. He's having a tough time here. He's trying to clear Bombo away with that left arm. Official right there to call it. It's going to be two on Keon Clark. At midcourt. Sparky Dickel. That's number two on Dickel. UNLV certainly stepping up the intensity here on defense. They're playing a much tighter brand of man-to-man -man defense. Bamba up top guarded like a blanket by Keon Clark. Oh, a tough pass and he lost it. They leave it off for Keon. Any doubt? A dozen for the lefty. Seven-point game, 11 minutes to go. And you can see that coming from his eyes at half court. Well, the word here, as I mentioned, defensive intensity. Nimovi has really pushed it up. Well, follow off the miss. Escobedo. Well, he caught a tough elbow right in the abdomen on that play when he followed it up. He's shaking it off. The last thing you want to do when you're involved in a hot game like this is have to come out. You know, Clark got a great lead pass here, which really helped him get to the basket. And again, left-handed, almost lost control of the ball, but managed to maintain his composure, get to the 44-35. Utah by nine. Daniels on the drive baseline. Give off. Kamala. Now you go back and look at this game. Billy Bano indeed uh, definitely will. John Kambala, who averages 16 points a game, held to just a bucket so far. It came in the first half. Yeah, it's remarkable. Uh, the plan was to let Kambala bang around down low, but uh, Texas El Paso has not allowed him to do that. Matter of fact, on one or two possessions that I recall, he got the ball down low, got called for an offensive foul, so that really closed him out. It's not that he's had the shot. Only, he's only had two shots no, in this no. game, one of two. And hasn't gotten the ball, not in his position. 6'9", 250. He was recruited heavily by UCLA, the Gators, the Bearcats of Cincinnati. Kambala with another. Made the second. So three points on the night. That's 13 points below his, his game average. Ten and a half to go. Sanders leads. Clark lets it fly. Kambala, can he chase it down? He does, but it goes right in the hands of Bamba. You know, in that case, it's almost better to let it go out and stop the play and bring the ball in bounds and get your defense set up. But... Under 10 minutes on the clock. Miners really need to get an offensive pattern set up now. Bill Bano calling for a five-second call, trying to step up the defense, trying to get a turnover. Six on the shot clock. Bamba off to Dickel. You know you're playing good defense when you can force John Bamba to shoot a 15, 18-footer. Deion Clark looking at the bucket, trying to bank it off the window. Loose ball picked up. Here comes Ranford. Two on one. And Clark hustling. But commits the foul. Clark just unable to convert with the shot. Big, strong rebound there. Ball up the floor. Good pass on the side. Watch Dickel try to draw the charge here. He does his best. Can't do it. Stays with the basket. Clark with the foul. That's three on Keon Clark. Only his fourth game back after the 11-game suspension. Good rotation on that free throw by Radford. Back in for UTEP is Wolfram and 
for Hardo. Radford, another freshman now playing for University of Texas El Paso. Hasn't gotten a lot of minutes this this year, but when he's on the floor, he, he's been productive, and you can see why. Makes his second. Radford with three points, all coming from the free throw line. Great story on Radford. He had a high fever, arthritis set in at the age of three. Doctors actually had to break his his knees, and they said you may never walk straight again. And here's a kid playing a Division One. Yeah, absolutely a wonderful story. Utah by ten. Simmons wants the ball. Drives. You heard the slap of the ball. B.J. Wade on the reach in. Sounded like all ball. But it did, but when you're playing defense from behind, you're always going to be in trouble. When the man makes the spin move, it's hard not to get called for reaching over. We'll see here. As he reaches in, he goes over Simmons' arm, and that constitutes a foul. Williams, Simmons, that is, will shoot a pair. Second foul on Wade. You can just feel Simmons still trying to work his way back into the field of competition at this level, and I'm sure it won't be long. I've seen an improvement in his play even from the first half to the second half. And again, this is his first game back after a 14-game suspension, so I'm sure he'll be a factor as the season goes on for UNLV. And he hasn't played in a long time. Remember, he, was, he had a red shirt last year after transferring from uh, UC Irvine. Six thirty-eight. UTEP. Turnover. Taking steps. Well, Pancho Sanders tried to poke his head in there with the big guys play, seeing if he could find a, an open lane to make a pass, and when he did, he dragged his pivot foot and caused a turnover. A lot of time coming up on the eight and a half minute mark. Osborne wants the three. In and out. Rebound goes out to UTEP. BJ Wade and another jump. I tell you, the, the one thing you learn first in basketball when you get a rebound is to try to keep the ball up and not bring it down low around your chest where another player can tie you up. And B.J. brought it down, got tied up, and now we've got a uh, jump ball situation. And I'm not quite certain which way the position they're pointing at this point. Well, Bano and uh, the Bear at the scorer's table. At this point, they're discussing whether the possession, possession error was correct or not. They've gone to the scorer's table to check who had possession last after a jump ball. And the ball is going to be in the hands of the Miners. See, another reason why you just go to the court for <laughs> the no line and jump them up. Utep with the possession coming up on the eight-minute mark. Hand check and the foul. Uh, Craig, not that it happened that often, but many times in my career when there was a jump ball called and it was a large player against a small player, you'd sneak another big player out there and the yeah. official might not notice it. So. In the heat of the battle, you forget who the two combatants were and you'd let any two players go in there and jump. Epps picks up the foul, his second. Clark back in. Kambala will take a seat. Fajardo. Sharif's been fairly quiet for the last four or five minutes. One bucket in this half. Had the five. First 20 minutes of 15. Makes the front end. This is a pivotal part of the game for both teams. UTEP can sustain their offensive push and put some defense together. They'll be in a good, good step for the finish. But UNLV really has been coming on strong, really coming to the basket. The lead is back to 10. Fajardo with 19 points. Corky Osborne underneath the key on, back up top. Kevin Simmons. That's really had no angle there to get the ball down into Clark. You really have to be out on the wing to feed into the post. He looked but had no way to get it to his teammate. Well, Daniels had a good look. Just missed the shot, but he comes back and reaches in for the foul. It's going to be four on Greedy Daniels. Uh, uh, 
Well, that's a tough, tough uh, exchange right now, but I'm telling you, Dickel's a good point guard. He can handle the ball and he can keep the team working. So, I agree, you'll get a rest, but uh, we haven't lost a whole lot with, with Dickel in the ballgame. William Smith at the line. The Miners just packed the ball in there after the free throw, and they just got position, possession away from UNLV. Now Bamba will get a try at the line. Isaiah Epps is third foul for UNLV. You know, Craig is a player, the last thing you ever wanted to have happen on the free throw line when the coach was watching was to let the player who has the advantageous position during a free throw shot let the uh, offensive player get over your back and get the ball. That was like a cardinal sin in basketball. And no one likes to see that happen. And UTEP did a great job that time of getting there, although they come up fruitless without the shots from Bamba. Missed them both. Back the other way. UNLV down by 10 with seven and a half to go. Dickel takes the pick from Clark. Behind the back, in the paint. Back to Keon Clark. Oh, what a rebound. Boy. William Smith has really come to life here in the second half. Clark hustles back, but his whistle for the foul on the breakaway try by Fajardo. Sharif really comes to the basket hard. He uses his body to protect the ball, comes in with his right hand, and forces Keon Clark to foul him. And you can see the displeasure in Keon's face. Fajardo hits the 20-point mark. Only player for Don Haskins to start all 15 games. I guess that's the definition of consistency. Yeah. And he's a junior. You know, he'll be back next year. He plays uh, plays like a senior, but he is a junior, and uh, he will be a great complement to the team throughout this season and next. 21-point game, and the Bear has to like the way his ball club is playing. They're up 12 despite some big buckets by Keon Clark. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over six. You just got to say that uh, Don Haskins minors have just played better basketball so far. You know, they've, they've come up with the defensive plays when they've needed them, and they've come in with good offense when they've had to have it, and they've just played a better basketball game at this point. He doesn't look like he's that happy about it at this point, but I give him seven minutes and 12 seconds, and maybe we'll see a smile. He's not a man of emotion. <laughs> Big minutes here for UNLV. The tip-in goes down. Simmons. Seven points in his first game back. Bamba works the wing against Keon Clark. Needs some help. William Smith smart to come over and get the ball back from John Bamba because he picked up his dribble. He couldn't move. And Guards are wise to come over and help the bigger players when they get stuck. Smith leans. The shot wouldn't go. Nearly tipped in by Clark. Back the other way comes Dipple. Dumps to Nesby. Good look. Fires it off the back of the iron. As a coach, John, that's a good look. All right, get a Without question, they got a shot at the basket. They're playing good defense. They're trying to get the pace of the game in their favor. William Smith, however, is all over the boards. Helping run the offense. He's doing a lot for UTEP right now. Clark with another swap off the try by Bamba. Dickel on the drive. Dickel leaves. And that one rolls off the basket. Bamba picks up the foul, his fourth. <laughs> 
Well, he tries to come in strong there. there we're seeing the block here now in the prior play by Keon Clark. Bamba again not turning his body to face the defender, instead electing to slide along sideways. Bad body position caused the foul. Cannot find the bottom of the net. UNLV, Dippel, a good free throw shooter, 72%. Missed them both. The tip try, hangs on it down. Keon Clark. That was slow motion. It really was. He timed that perfectly because the ball was just starting to roll off the rim. If he'd have touched it while it was in the cylinder, he wouldn't have gotten the basket. Eight-point game. Under six minutes ago. Fajardo, double pump. Clark just stood there. Just waited for him. Wisely didn't leave his feet. No fucking shot. Clark playing with four fouls. Dickel drives down the lane. And Fajardo, the big fellow dribbles down, leaves it. And a whistle. On the back side was Corky Osborne. That was good playing by... Sharif Fajardo, you know, he brings the ball up the floor, he draws two defenders towards him, makes the right play to the basket. That's a big play. Three on Corky Osborne. That will put William Smith at the free throw line. Averages 30 minutes a game for Haskins. Four points, all here in the second half. Good shot. This is the part of the ball game where your key players have to show their conditioning. A player like Keon Clark or Sharif Fajardo, they've really got to suck it up and stay in the ball game and remain a factor. Six points for Smith. The lead is back to 10. Simmons hangs on that pivot foot. The shot wouldn't go. Keeps it alive. John Bamba really working hard inside trying to get the ball. Here comes Nesby on the drive. Flips it up and in. Nesby again active as always. You see UNLV trying to get their full court press set up. Slow the ball down. Maybe get a turnover. UTEP, great job of passing the ball. Good way to break the press. Wade with the bucket. Only senior on this UTEP team. Oh my, Keon Clark, check the rim, will you? <laughs> you get the feeling he loves to play above the rim. If he can just get the ball in the right spot, he can put it through. 16 points for Keon Clark. Clark with a real quick turn here. Gets an open lane to the basket, knows how to finish. Timeout, UNLV, 4.16 to go, 54-46. Before releasing NFL Game Day 98, we asked Robert Brooks to check it out. Oh, Do you like the graphics? The graphics are tight. Yeah. Going to the house, baby, to the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, like, we like that, yes? Mm -hmm. Touchdown! All the way. Uh, oh, come on, man. Hey, that's... That don't show my breakaway speed. Well, I would never say that you lost a step. What? It's, uh... <clears throat> the numbers. My ancestor dreamt of winning the Highlands Open. But his golf wasn't up to par. So he designed a wider golf club for better control of his drive. of Nebraska tomorrow from Maui on ESPN, the Hooters Hula Bowl. On that last play there, you know, Keon Clark gets the ball, and right there, if he doesn't get help from Sharif Fajardo toward the basket instead of on the ball side, he's going to get beat, and uh, Keon Clark knows just what to do with it, knows how to finish big. Keon Clark, 16 points, but yet what worries Billy Baino the fact that his big guy is out there with four fouls. B.J. Wade up top. Bamba. 
Dumps it down. They try to force it in the turnover. Rebels run. Nesby. Jump ball. That's a great call by the official. You know, Bamba got position, got his hand on the ball, and didn't create any real contact. He just caused the ball to get locked up between their two hands. Here you'll get a good look at it. Bamba right there. Just stops the shot. Possession to UNLV. Osborne way out for three. Not even close. You know, as you watch John Bamba play, one of the things that's critical about his ability is that he went through a real big growth spurt when he was younger. He was playing a smaller position, he actually played guard for a while, and he went through a growth spurt that got him up to his current height. He's about 6'11", and he's really adjusting to this newfound height of his. Uh, there's not a lot of times you see a player go from the guard position in high school and you're playing at 6'11 six, <laughs> six in college. Well, make sure you stick around. Coming up right after this one, the winner X Games from Crest of Butte, Colorado, Chris Fowler and Chris McKendry standing by. Half pipe, slope style, snow cross, dual downhill. You'll see it on the 98 winner X Games coming up right after this game from El Paso. Bano wants this game very much. They lost at the pit, John, Thursday night by 18. It was close at the half, but yet the Lobos pulled away. 37 in a row now at the pit. Pretty predominantly on three-point shots. They just bombed from the outside and actually really effective from the three-point strike. Now Clayton Shields is very dangerous from that three-point line. New Mexico and Utah ranked in the top 15. Well, the wax getting uh, a lot of press. Oh boy! You got and rightfully a, so. You got a Billy Bano coaching. Uh, you got the Haskins. You got Rick Majerus at Utah. Tarkini at Fresno State. Riley Wallace in Hawaii. Well, Bano wanted over and back. Well, the ball was tapped by Greedy Daniels, and if he forced the ball into the backcourt, he was touched last by UNLV. So Utah can go get it. Smith to Bamba. Sanders, patience by Utah. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Fahardon really needs to work at getting himself open down low, even if only to force a foul and get to the free throw line. He's a very good foul shooter. Get himself open, work to the basket, draw a foul. Three point shots away. Daniels cradles it for UNLV. Daniels to Dickel. Simmons fires it up. Draws a foul. He'll shoot a pair. You know, you can see that both Simmons and Clark want the ball in these situations. They're playing the same side of the court. If Simmons can't get the ball down into Keon Clark, he's going to push the ball toward the lane, try to get an open shot if he can. I'm sure he'll dump it off. But both of them have been showing a lot of, uh, I'd have to say, maturity in looking for the ball down the stretch, which is what you want your key players to do. Back in comes Brandon Wolfram and I'm out of Amarillo, Texas. Are you looking at the eyes? Kevin Simmons looking for his eighth point. Strong on the first, short on the second. I tell you what, UTEP was almost bailed out there because a UNLV player, I believe, from this angle, touched the ball. Fans saw it from that side, but the official watching the play from the scores table part of the court did not see it. UNLV gets the ball. 54-46 coming up on two and a half minutes. Daniels drives, slides, hung it up on the front of the iron, but couldn't get the bucket to go down. Smith, the seas parted. <laughs> Eight points. You gotta love it. If it opens itself to you, you gotta take it. He's a guy that takes advantage of every opening out there. All eight points by Smith here in the second half and a costly turnover by UNLV. We can see the frustration. It's around this UNLV ball club. 
Bano hoping to get a timeout so he can talk to his team, but not wanting to call one yet. Smith again, just attacking the basket. Ten point game, two minutes remain. Wolfram. Good poise on the part of the freshman, wait, waiting to tell the pass is there to make it. They want to chew some clock, but now Don Haskins calls a timeout. 152 remaining in this one. It's a full timeout. 152 to go here in El Paso, UTEP by 10. Parenting is a constant learning process. What you have to do is prioritize. Yeah, they are, and they've done it by holding UNLV with their defense, and as a result, they're looking at a uh, win here. Uh, at the same time, UTEP, you know, hasn't been a particularly scoring team. They've never scored 70 in a game yet this year anyway, so they're doing well defensively to hold UNLV below 60. Uh, UTEP trying to even up their conference whack record in the Western Athletic Conference at 2-2. Two two. UNLV at 1-1. One one. Again, coming off the loss of the pit Thursday night, and UTEP winning here Thursday night against Air Force by 11. And as Don Haskins said, it's the best team Air Force has had in quite some time, so that's a great victory for them as well. Make sure you stick around. Winner X Games coming up right after this game here in El Paso. 142 to go. Mark Dickel picks up his third. And that will send William Smith to the line. You know, William Smith really emerged as a leader during the last year's season. He really stepped up his game and took a leadership role. And you feel here in the second half of this ball game that he's really found ways to keep the momentum going all on his own. He's got himself to the free throw line. He's passed the ball off. And he's really done the things you want a guard to do when the game uh, gets into crunch time. Now, Fajardo has scored six in this half, but it's really been Smith, as you mentioned, who's kept the distance they built at halftime. Now, I mean, he averaged about six points a game last year. He's doubled that. He's averaging 12 points a game this year. And uh, just showing what he can do, really showcasing his talents. And he's only a sophomore. Daniels' three was blocked. And now the reach in. Simmons picks up the foul. 129 to go. You know, Craig, the reason why I mention a lot of times what class these players are, because in college basketball, unlike the pros, you know, the, the coaching staff has constantly got to think about the mixture of players. They've got to recruit all year long. And it's important to think about the future of the team and who's graduating and who's going to be back. For example, uh, last year, uh, Coach Haskins lost three critical players to graduation. He lost uh, Jeff Spiller, Jojo Garcia, and Kamani Jones-Young, and they were all critical players to this team, and he's had to really rebuild it this year, and as you see, he's got some younger players and some older players that he's mixing up, so, you know, he, he's looking pretty good down the road here. Going up right after this game, make sure you stick around. Chris Fowler and Chris McKendry will bring you the Winter X Games from Crescent Butte. 59-46, 13-point lead for Utah. Dickel picks up his fourth. You know, another uh, factor that a lot of coaches have to consider now, too, is who may jump and go pro. I mean, Kenny Thomas thought about it in New Mexico, but he had announced earlier uh, in the week that he's going to stay and play his senior season. Yeah, it's an important consideration nowadays, you know, with the kind of money they're playing in the professional sport, which I will not comment about. <laughs> I was <gonna. laughs> born a little too soon. You well, know, let me talk to you about that, John. <laughs> <laughs> let me get your real thought. <laughs> Simmons. We'll go to the free throw line. Well, Simmons working hard to get that feel back. And at this point of the ball game, he can uh, work on his moves, get a little practice down, and see what it feels like to work in the low post. 104 to go. And 104 until we hit the prime time day two of the Winter X Games. Simmons with eight points in his first game back. 
and he'll be a part of this program during the rest of this year as soon as he gets himself back into the flow of the game because he's definitely got the physical tools and the talent to contribute here in a big way. Was this game once down? Bano said it would take three, four weeks maybe for the new guys to mesh. Do you, do you buy into that? Yeah, I do completely. And, and I think uh, just the chemistry and the timing of playing with these players on the floor, it's a lot different in practice than it is um, in an actual game where you're playing against an opponent. So it takes a while to get into your game condition. We'll take it to Crest of Butte, Colorado in just a minute. Winter X Games in prime time here on ESPN2. Fajardo, who's had a fine game, will have to be at the line. Fajardo, the kind of player that you'd find playing quite a bit in the offseason throughout the summer months as well, honing his talents, working on his game. Played quite a bit last summer as well, and he's really carried it on, carried the momentum on into the season this year. And a timeout, 51 ticks left on the clock. Boy, and Bear Haskins, you can see, still coaching despite the 14-point the lead. Keep the channel where it is. Winter X Games will follow. Chris Fowler and Chris McKendry. We'll bring you today's action on prime, prime time. I'll tell you, no snow in El Paso. Chris <laughs> Butte, though, plenty. <laughs> No, it was very nice in El Paso today. Well, they're expecting near 70 degrees. Now. Does that mean I get to stay? Well, for Hardo, 24 and 11, 7 to 12, double double. Did it again. He is a name that you won't hear much of. You don't get a lot of press in El Paso, Texas, but yet considered one of the finer players in the Western Athletic Conference. And it's easy to see why if his, his game is even. Well, the three-point shot has not been there for UNLV. Daniels will turn and fire. Foul. That should be three shots. B.J. Wade. The foul, and that will send Daniels to the line for three. That's the kind of foul no coach likes to see. No matter when it happens in a ball game, even if you're ahead by quite a few points as the uh, minors are right now, you don't like to see your players making poor decisions on the floor that create these kinds of situations. You just be happy enough to get the ball down the floor and let the buzzer go off and get in the locker room. Don Haskins will pick up win number 702. UTEP will improved to 11 and 4 UNLV dropping down to 8 and 7 you know Billy Bano disappointed we talked about the talent on this team and there is a lot this is a team you got to worry about maybe in the month of March yeah definitely because things can reverse themselves very quickly you know you talk about the 702 wins that Don Haskins have and I appreciated your question of him before the game and he said you know if you coach 37 years you're bound, you're bound you're to win a few and I really appreciate his candor in saying that well, if you don't, you don't last to coach That's 37. True. You'd never make it that far. You better win 700 games. 27 seconds and change remain. 61-48. Make sure you stay tuned. Winner X Games will follow. Of course, Haskins played for the great Hank Iba. Mm -hmm. And you can see a lot of Hank's coaching strategies in the way he coaches this uh, UTEP minor team. Greedy Daniels reaches in for the foul, stops the clock with 14 and a half. This should be it for Greedy. Now the second run and rebel to foul out this game. Simmons was the first, and now Daniels. Daniels will leave. Scoreless here in the second half. Four points and three rebounds. Not his typical productive night. Just had trouble getting on track this evening. Sanders will try again. Makes a second. Five seconds ticking away. Impressive win by the Utah Miners up by 14. Nickel up and in. You got to go to the basket in the last couple seconds because the offensive team is the winning team's probably not going to contest you. That's it. 
The final score from El Paso, UTEP wins 62-50. Day two of the 98 Winter X Games is next for John Lambert and our entire ESPN2 crew. I'm Craig Bullerjack. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The X Games are next. Who's coming to town? Larry Legend is back.